Uh, good day, guys. As you all know me, as a mentor, Nasdaq Ninja. So, guys, uh, okay, so I wanted to wait until maybe we have like 50 people here so that we can uh, allow everyone into the class and then so that we can start. And then once we have 50 people, we begin with the teaching and everything. Others will join during the process. Understand? Uh, and I think I'm late with 11 minutes, which is my mistake, but then that last I uh, will begin rather than that. So guys, uh, today we're gonna talk about analysis, how to analyze the chart, understand? So this thing, it's actually like uh, a weekly trading plan. So the basics that I have gave you guys, okay, if you knew, obviously, maybe you knew to the basics and everything, we're still gonna teach those basics again and again and again and again until you understand them, you understand? But then if you didn't catch those classes, you can always get a link for Telegram and go preview the other videos and check. It's not like uh, it's an introduction. No, those are basics, the key of, of the market, you understand? Those are like your tools, what you need into the market. It's not something that actually once you become my student, you're no longer a UV. Now you're no longer a UV, you're a Forex trader. So from today, don't tell yourself that you're a newbie. Even if you play account, you're not playing your account because you're a newbie. No, you're a Forex trader, understand? You are a Forex trader. So this is what I want you guys to do. And this is what I want you guys to tell yourself from today. What you do from today, you tell yourself that you are a Forex trader, you're not a beginner. Understand, once you start achieving that, that's when you'll start making more money and more cash. Understand? So uh, today we're gonna be going for the chart, straight to straight with the chart and analyzing the chart. Uh, remember, uh, you need to understand the form of patterns. We're gonna start by talking about patterns. Actually, I want you guys to understand few patterns which can actually give you a direction of the market, understand? Like I always say, I like trading reversal patterns. You can consider yourself trading reversal and continuation patterns. I only trade one continuation pattern. So nonetheless, there's no one which I ever thought about candlestick. Uh, candlestick will come uh, next week, Sunday. That's when we're gonna talk about candlestick. Actually, I want you guys to be aware of certain candlestick. Candlesticks that will change the direction. Candlestick that can tell you which direction are we actually taking at the moment. The reason sometimes when we enter, we use margin call is due to the candlestick formation. Understand, there are certain candlestick uh formation which we understand which is like our uh, evening star morning star pin bar engulfing so those are basics the one that i use and these uh and shaving candlesticks so those are uh sorry about that guys uh it's my network so what i'm gonna do now i'm gonna switch to another wi-fi i'm gonna switch to another wi-fi I'm gonna switch to another Wi-Fi, guys, so that we can begin. Let me uh, quickly switch switch on the other Wi-Fi because this one it seems like it's bad now. Sorry about that. Yeah, guys, uh, this one is the best Wi-Fi. I don't think we're going to be experiencing a problem. This one is fine. I've been using it for too long. So like I was saying, guys, uh, can you stick? We're going to talk about this week. So guys, these things, guys, are actually like, I don't want you guys to have that attitude of saying you don't use a trend line, you don't use whatever. You need to use everything, understand? You need to use support and resistance. You need to be aware of what is uh, diagonal support and resistance. What is the candlestick? What is the pattern, you understand? Once you get to understand those things, there is no one in the market who will tell you otherwise, you understand? Because this is the only key. Once you start choosing, you start limiting yourself. But once you start knowing everything, that's when you start killing every movement. For me, I trade every day, Monday to Friday. For other traders, they only trade on the specific moment when their strategy is being respected and which is a problem, you understand? I want you guys to trade 
every day. You understand? Every day. What you do? You just go to the tools, apply tools, uh, half by half. Then they will tell you everything about the process. You understand? So, guys, and the funny part and the good part about smart trade is that the three months, uh, the three months mentorship haven't yet begin. You know why? Because they we still accepting new students, but that is a benefit for you all because once we begin with the three months uh, sessions, you all gonna be having a limited of three months to know everything. But now you're still enjoying, we're teaching you guys everything. You haven't yet have the limitation, you understand? The month that have passed, we're not counting it. And this month we're not gonna count it. Once we close the special, that's when we're gonna say, now the three months begin, you understand? Already you will be aware of a lot of things. You'll be knowing a lot of things. Let's say this one we are at now, it's a preschool. You understand? You are at preschool, but you are at preschool with the high school knowledge. You understand? So once we are at high school with the limitation of three months, that's when you're going to be killing the market. You understand? We're going to be introducing a lot of things, live trading. You understand? We're going to be going classes with students teaching us. That's what I'm going to be learning from you guys, from what I have taught you, because there are some few students which are showing me their feedbacks and which I, I, I probably like i like those feedbacks guys if you're killing it show me how you're killing it you understand because you motivate me and the more you show me the more i become more confident with my strategy you understand so nonetheless today i just want to show you guys uh quick patterns understand so those patterns i'm gonna be drawing them here on the board and then we're gonna be taking them on the chart so the patterns that i want you guys to understand it's actually a double bottom. It's actually double bottom. So obviously double bottom is something that most of the people ain't aware of because you always have to enter on the neckline but not when you're trading with me. You don't enter on the neckline when you're trading with me. You enter before the market makers can know you are going to enter. So your intro point is going to be here when the market comes. You understand? So most of the people like asking me about fundamental. So fundamental is simple, guys. Fundamental, you always go for the zone to zone. You understand? So if the market wants reversed here, what you're going to do is that you're going to create your simple zone here. You know that if the market touches here during fundamental, you're going to be entering your entries, understand? You don't enter when it takes your direction, you keep on entering. You enter when it manipulates you, you keep on entering because at the end of the day, it will come here. When you exit here, that's when I'll be saying exit, guys, exit, and then you exit your proper profit. The next thing Nasdaq Ninja is taking buys. Why? Because I'm using zone to zone during fundamental, nothing else. Understand? On Nasdaq. So here you can take your entry point as buy. And then at the point here, you can actually like put your stop loss here. So in most cases, they will say, let the market manipulate you. But I always say on the first touch, you can't just pass without a border gauge. Understand? You can't just pass. So here you're gonna be having your, your, your stop loss. Here you're gonna be having your stop loss. And then your take profit has to be on the zone as well. Here you're gonna be having your take profit. This is your TP, understand? So at the end of the day, what we actually analyze is that for the market to move from this point to this one, but for me to be here, I'll be enough with the profit. At the end of the day, guys, if the market passes the zone like this one here, let's say you're on a, your H1 time frame, the market passes the zone. When it passes the zone and then reverse, don't be thinking of fakey breakout in your head. Relax. Don't be thinking of that. You go to your one minute time frame and one and five minutes time frame. Here it will be a rejection that comes here. You understand? But on one minute time frame, it will be retesting. On five minutes, it will be retesting. You're gonna be re-entering your buys here. Then you're gonna be hitting your take profit here. This is what you're not been taught because what you're gonna you're gonna wait for the market to hit here and come back here. Check the distance. Check the distance. Check the distance. The distance it's profit and it's pop is proper profit. You understand? So what you can do is simple. When the market comes back here with a sort of rejection, once it touches, you enter at a smaller time frame, you melt. 
you know, from this movement to this one, I'm going to be begging like a lot. Understand? So this is one, it's a double bottom. If you don't understand it, guys, uh, we'll keep, you can ask question on it. We'll keep you updated on them. Which time frame do you confirm our entry points? Guys, when it comes to entry points, it doesn't matter the time frame. Like I'm saying here, due to the rejection, you're going to see a rejection and you're going to confirm on a bigger time frame. The next thing the market is here, there is what I call same time retest, which is happen on a smaller time frame like M5, M15, and M1. Depending on when you go by reducing where the process of rejection is. If you're on an H1, obviously you're going to be having a rejection. It's obviously going to be having an, a rejection as well on, on, on M30. And then let's say on M15, you're not having a rejection. You're having a candlestick that it's reversing. That candlestick will be your, your entry point. Once it touches the support, your plug, it will be your entry point. Simple as ABC. You get most of the people when always they enter entries, they lose. You know why you lose when you enter entries? It's because you enter at the wrong position. You don't enter when the market is buying if it's not a continuation pattern or any rejection. Understand? You need... You know, I trade based on experience. So guys, I'm gonna talk, I'm not gonna talk about head and shoulder today, but I'm gonna talk about continuation pattern. So continuation pattern, it's like this. It's an impasse correction, impasse correction. You know that. So it's like this, um, like this. So I always say, tell people that the only thing that advises me to take a direction is the position of the market, the shape. You can't give me this shape. The next thing I'm expecting selling opportunity. I'm gonna be expecting selling opportunities if I'm here. If I'm here, I know it's a buying opportunity, guys. There is no way I'll be coming back to the bottom. You understand? So this one, it's an impasse correction, impasse movement. So nonetheless, like I said, guys, I'm not here for pattern. I'm here for how can you actually analyze your chart and understand your chart. You understand in any form. So I'm gonna analyze Nasdaq and US thirty. And you guys gonna pick one thing that you want me to analyze. Anything you just pick, we analyze that thing in order for us to understand that those basics can actually work every everywhere. We can remove uh, what is this indices? We can go for currencies or cryptocurrencies. You understand? You're gonna be guys. You're gonna be you guys choosing which one we can analyze. So nonetheless, let's go to to the chart because this is the basic thing we need. I'm gonna remove everything here, and then everything on Nasdaq. So strictly, guys, I'm going to be using zone, trend lines, and then I'm going to be using what? You understand? I'm going to be using what I have taught you, zones, trend lines. Uh, the patterns will be here as well, considered like this one. It's a dull pattern here. It will be considered as well, but during the process of what is it that we're going to be doing during the week, you understand? So we're going to be applying what we have talked about. So, so that next week, when we re-talk about those things, Others should be knowing how to apply them. You understand? We don't want to leave you guys behind. Now we have to go to the zone, teach you the zone, go back to no. Now we're telling you how to apply those things. And then next week, we're going back to the same things. We're teaching you guys. And then you understand. So you hear me? This point, at this point, I'm not talking about a uh, major key, the last week class. You know why I'm not talking about the major key? I don't see any major trend. So if I don't see no major trend, I don't see no major key. So I don't see no most of continuation position that I'm going to be holding. But once I see a major trend, that's when I'm going to be saying, now I have my major key, simple as A, B, C, D. So nonetheless, remember NASDAQ, I like taking it from H4 because when I unzoom my chart, I'll be already on my daily time frame. So I'm going to take it from H4 straight, no lies. So from this point, guys, when you, you enter the chart, understand? So those basics, it's, it's when you analyze. When you enter the chart, every chart, you start from a higher time frame. You can start from a daily time frame, depending on how you understand the market. But I always say it will depend on the view when you unzoom the chart. It will tell you if you need the daily time frame or not. The reason I don't need the daily time frame is because of one thing, guys. If I were to plot a trend, I'm going to be plotting a trend that I can't reach. And based on the theory on Nasdaq, I mean, like, based on theory of the book, Nasdaq doesn't respect most of the thing when it comes to selling because the, the momentum of it, I don't feel like it's more on selling. Yes, we do sell the market sell, but if I were to draw the trend and the breakout, why don't we reach the bottom part? I don't know why. You understand? That one is the market thing. And I said, so at the end of the day, don't forget your previous price. You need to always create your previous price. So remember, this is what, this is our, uh, our upper trend here. This is our upper trend here. 
this is our upper trend. So obviously, once you start considering an upper trend, you need to understand what is it that will make us to go to the top if we're having a trend like this. That's the first thing first, you understand? So I will say the first thing first that will apply me to go to the top, it's a major trend. I had a major trend in the past. Why shouldn't I have a major trend in the future? You understand? So you see this point. There's a buildup of a trend. This is the first point that will be building up in a trend. But what, what I understand about a trend is that obviously, uh, what is this? The lower low has to be at the bottom bottom. We'll, we'll get to that topic sooner. So if you can check here, we're gonna be creating our highest point. And then we're gonna be creating our lowest, lowest point. And then I'm gonna be creating my current lowest point. So I will only create three things here. I'll only create this ones. Actually, not three. Actually, I'll create as many as possible, but the other ones I'm gonna be reflecting them with the rectangle. So this is what you do when you get to the chart. You just do those things, guys. These things they will make sense. Trust me, they will make sense at the end of the day. The market respects these things. There is nothing else that it's respecting currently other than these things. Understand? So I'm gonna be uh, putting my support here as well. And guys, this is Nasdaq, guys. There's no way it wouldn't reach this position. If I can ask you a question, most of you might not know, but I know, understand? Here, we're not having a double bottom. I'm not gonna count the previous one. I'm gonna count the current one, you understand? We need to touch in order for us to go up. There is no way we'll touch there. So what I want you guys to understand here is the position of understanding of the market, you understand? Once you have something like this, Once you have something like this, let me unzoom the chart. Let me actually reset reset the zones. Yes. So once you have something like this, it's obviously here you want to set a zone here. I'm gonna put it here. You had a zone here, which actually you didn't re uh, retest on it. You didn't retest the bigger time frame. Didn't retest, but obviously closed outside. It obviously means the bigger time frame has to be the one which is going to be retesting on it. If it didn't close, was rejecting, that's when I was going to be considering myself using smaller time frame. So I need this position. So I'm going to be using the rectangle time frame, uh, I mean, tool like this. So at this position here, I'll be taking my selling opportunities. When the market reaches here, I will be taking my selling opportunities. The reason I have covered the whole peaks is with inside this position, I'll be entering, in, entering entries. Once it touches here, I'll be entering entry of sell in the step. And I have best believe that when the market opens, it will be buying from this position to this one. There at the top, that's when I'm gonna be considering myself taking selling opportunities. And then I'm gonna be doing the 90% rule at this position. So what I like about 90% rule is that anytime it touches you, I'll be taking opportunities, understand? So that's the key part. So already I have three positions where I'm gonna take my entries. When the market opens, I'm gonna be taking my buys here, understand? So this is my first point. And I always say on the first plan, you need to pass. If you fail on your first plan, then it's a problem. And then I'm gonna be taking my sales here understand and then i'll take my other buy here so it means the market has to move here to here and then to here you can wait for it to touch and then take it to this point it's simple understand it's a matter of understanding what is it that you understand i'm on an h4 time frame these things that i'm i'm covering here they're basically the strongest currently I haven't went to the smaller time frame. It's fine. Now we're going into this. We're taking it to 60 minute time frame. As much as you can see, the last candlestick is a sort of candlestick pattern. Understand? It's a bullish candlestick that I have closed. It gave us a more, more confident of gonna taking buying opportunities at this certain point here. But we know once we touch here, it's either we're gonna break or we're gonna retest, go to the bottom. Once we break, that's when you're gonna be considering yourself taking buying opportunities. But obviously, 
you will be putting your stop loss here. You're going to be on your, on your selling position. Once you hit your stop loss, that's when you consider yourself taking another position. Now you're buying. You understand? You're buying. You understand? So that's how it is. It's all about the plan. You need to know that here you're going to be waiting for last candlestick to close as a bearish. That's when you're going to be entering your selling position. You understand? So nonetheless, uh, let's continue. Let's begin with the process. As you can see, like I said here, we're going to be taking buys. Obviously, you need more confidence. Why are you going to be taking buys? I think I have a support at this position which made the market to reverse. So it's allowed for me to say I can take a buy to this position. So we can put it like this. I can take a buy from this position and then this buy can come here. There's possibilities of the market to do what? Let's remove this one. So it's all about the trap, guys. I always tell, tell, tell people that there is a point whereby the market should in charge. And then the market does this. And then at the end of the day, it comes here. That's when we can consider ourselves coming to the bottom. That's simple. Don't let the market manipulate you. You understand? So once you have your support like this, it's, 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 it's done. You understand? At the end of the day, you want to trade three times a day, two times or once. You understand? I trade analysis and i trade uh times understand i trade in the morning around a uh, london session and then i trade around 12 when the market opens and i'm gonna trade on new york session around half past trade but those things you shouldn't touch during the process if you you know in order for you to be patient you need to have your own time right but obviously you need the point whereby the market shouldn't touch if you touch at this certain point i'm gonna be executing certain movements you know because I want you to understand why do I trust this, this point, understand, like this one. Why do you trust this point? It's a question that you're asking yourself. This point here once created this movement. This whole movement once created by this point. Okay, that's fine. We're going to remove it. This point once created this second movement from the other one, creation, understand. Let's take it from this point. You created this movement. Understand? You created that movement. So it's obviously at this certain point, bro, you are the strongest at the moment. You once created the sales. What is it that shouldn't give me confidence that once I touch it here, I'm going to be selling? Based on what you have created, you created big movement. You have stopped big movement. Obviously, this is just a small movement moving from here to here. There is possibilities of this person to create a bigger movement, but there is a way of you stopping the big movement. You understand? So this is what you need to respect. You need you respect based on the previous part. You understand? This thing is simple. Once you get to understand it, the same position once created a big movement here. It's the same position. Why wouldn't you create a big movement going to the bottom? Why? Because we passed it. It's obviously we once uh, failed to pass it here. We went to the top. We came back again. We went to the top. What is it that will not make us to pass it at this moment. You understand? Those are questions that you need to be asking yourself. Those are questions that you need to be asking yourself. What is it that will then make it us to pass the position at the moment? You understand? Because at the moment, we're looking for us to not pass this. There's a zone. Like I always say, I'm at my zone. When you're at your zone, you're at your zone. There's nothing that's going to stop you. You understand? So uh, apparently now, I think we've covered everything that you see on the analysis, that's when you can consider yourself going to 30 minutes time frame. You want to check what is it that going on on 30 minutes. Understand? Let's reset the chart so that we can understand it. Okay, there, still the same thing. So once we touch here, we executed our buy. If you're still holding your safe, at the end of the day, when the market gets up, we're going to be taking buys for retest. You understand? It's sort of like a retest. Once we reach us there, we're going to be looking for selling opportunities. I think those selling opportunities can occur around 3 a.m. in the morning. You understand? 3 a.m. in the morning. It can occur, and I'm going to be inside, and I'm going to be sending signals if you won't be sleeping. We're going to be killing the market. So this is how you see if you're going to be having a good week or a bad week. Based on analysis, already I see a good week ahead of all of us. You understand? So now, due to that, we have already like covered everything. You know you're going to be entering buys here. 
You know you're gonna be entering sales here. You know you're gonna be entering buys here. Already you have a plan, points which you shouldn't touch. If you touch this position, I'm gonna be executing. If you touch the top position, I'm gonna be executing. That's your plan. That is the time frame. There is no time frame that you're gonna get rather than that. You understand? Those ones are the time frames. You understand? Those ones are the time frame. So nonetheless, uh, I think now we can let's go back to H4 time frame and see what is it that we have done. Okay, this is the whole plan, this is the whole process. This is the whole plan, this is the whole process. Now we can do it. We can go to another time frame. But from this position, we buy here, we sell. If we come here, we're gonna be buying. Don't buy here on the second touch because the more the market touches the support, I feel like it's the more it disrespected. You understand? It's, most of the people say the more it touches, it shows the power of it. Now, the more you touch it, it's the more you're disrespecting the point. You understand? Because at the end of the day, you're gonna pass. But on the first touch, you're not actually disrespecting. We know we haven't been aware of, 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 of the market passing the point. Understand? So that's the key part. That's the key part. So now we're gonna be jumping on, on US 30. I'm gonna be jumping on US 30. Uh, let's quickly unzoom the chart. So this is the whole thing you have. Obviously, the reason I'm looking for selling opportunities because I broke, came back here, retested, came back to retest. Now I'm going here. I know there's no way I'm gonna be going to the top without touching these points here. You know why? These are the same points that took me to the top. So why wouldn't I be stopped by anything that comes to their way? You understand? I'll be have. I have to be stopped somewhere here. So I'll be coming back here because of recreating a, a major trend as well. You understand? So nonetheless, guys, let's go to uh, USDG. Yeah, so this is USDG, guys. Like I said, guys, uh, you're going to pick the third one. Which one should we actually analyze? You understand? Which one we should actually analyze? Let me quickly check something on my device here. So guys, the first thing first that you have to do, you remember, you need to create your highest point on an H4 time frame. Oh, uh, you create your highest point. Remember, you analyze everything that you see, guys. Uh, you create your highest point and your current lowest point. I mean, your lowest, lowest point, and then your current lowest point, it's somewhere here. Let's see. Don't be fooled by people saying Nasdaq and New State are the same. No. Analysis are the one that can become the same sometimes, but sometimes they're not the same. Understand? So I'm going to be adding another resistant here. Yeah. I think they're fine, guys. I don't want to create a lot of them because it's going to confuse you all. So let's reset the chart. So it's firstly going to take it on H4. Yeah. So you're going to see how nice this thing is going to be. So once you add this position, you want to create a simple thing here. So I'm going to create a support here. Already you see a different thing, you understand? I think the mindset of you guys saying this thing is the same, it's off currently, because you see a different thing, you understand? I see a different thing, you know, due to you can see that on an H4 time frame, it came back to the top, you know, which can actually consider more buying opportunities due to the gap, you understand? We can have an upper, upper gap, which will later cover, but at the moment, I'm looking for buying opportunities. Like on Nasdaq, still, I'm looking for buying opportunities. And then I'm going to take my trend from this point here.
okay, 90% rule, already occurred. It's obvious, we're gonna be taking buying opportunities. You know, just talk to your analysis. You know, don't, don't, you, you don't have to care who says what. The analyst is gonna tell you everything that you wanna know. The only way we can pass this position is when we break this trend. Okay, I'm gonna remove this text. I return it by mistake. You see, when you break this trend, that's when you're gonna consider self retesting here, then going to the bottom and the stem. Uh, let me quickly check something. Yeah. So as much as you can see, uh, once it retested there, that's when it can go to the top, you understand? At the end of the day, yeah, I'm still looking for selling opportunities, but at the moment, I'm looking for buying opportunities. Maybe I'm going to get my, high, my hardest sell there, you understand? So obviously, but at the end of the day, uh, let me quickly fix this point here. Maybe I can come here and then retest on the smaller time frame. Then the next thing I'll be dropping. So actually, here I just want to actually build you guys like you need to do traps. Understand points where you're gonna be entering. So yes, now I'm gonna remove this point here and then I'm gonna remove this one as well. So now we're gonna actually analyze, uh, apply, apply our first point. We're gonna be entering buying opportunities here. We buy, we buy, we buy, we buy. Let's say you lose. It's not the end of the day. You're going to be hitting your stop loss somewhere here. You come back again. You plug another trap again. It's obviously the market can take you out at the end of the day buy. You say once it touches here, I will execute sales. It touches there. You sell. It takes your direction. Now you recover the losses you took here. You're on the profit side. Let's say it didn't go there, it broke this position and then came back and retest. You take sales, you recover. You understand? So those are the part of the process. So you need to plan your trade, plan your losses. How much losses can I uptake here? How much profit can I make here? Remember, you need to make more profit than the losses because the more you make more losses, the more you're not going to see any improvement. That's fine. So this analysis that I'm doing now, I'm not going to recreate them. This is the same analysis that I'm gonna use the whole week. You understand, the whole week. So as much as you can see here, we don't have no choice rather than to go. Let me create my, my third touch first. Understand, I need to create my third touch, guys. I need to, the point that I know if I touch, I'm gonna to be selling diagonally. I'm gonna take it from this point here because I only use the two touches. So I need only those ones. Obviously, most of you see a wedge. I'm not, I'm not gonna say this is a wedge because I'm not actually applying this based on this. I'm applying this based on the top side and the lower side. Hope you all understand it. So now we're gonna go to 60 minutes time frame. We check what is it that is gonna happen here. Like guys, we already have a confirmation. Candlestick closing on a bullish candlestick. Understand? So most of the people can ask me a question and which is a beautiful question. Why you don't think that this market won't retest there? What is it that I have I touched? It's the biggest, strongest thing. It's stronger than the point that I'm gonna touch here. The diagonal support is stronger than this point. That's when I'm gonna say, I need to respect this one. I'm not gonna be disturbed by the other one. Why? Check where did we get this point. Understand? Uh, let me bring that back. Moved it by mistake. I understand. So it's obviously, I know that the market, if the market gaps up here, completely I'll be saying, now I'm gonna be taking buying opportunities. The market gaps up. You know, sometimes you just let it go up. Once it goes up and see that, once it closes somewhere here, execute buys, execute buying opportunities. That's when you're gonna see that the market really moves. Let's check. Like I told you, we need a bearish candlestick in order for us to take bearish movement. If the market gives us a bearish movement, that's when we're going to be taking a bearish movement. But now we have the previous candlestick. It's a bearish. It's a bullish, I mean. So we need to be following the candlestick movement. So let's go to 30 minutes time frame.
So the last candlestick on 30 minutes time frame, it's a bearish. Understand? That's where you start doing what sticking around. You no longer understand what is it that's going on. Let me show you the tricky part. Check the last candlestick before the, the bearish one. It passed the zone. There was a zone here. It passed. This one, there's ideal possibility of it being retesting. How can you see the retest? We're going to say five minutes now. You can see that this candlestick here. Let me remove this one so that you can see what is it that we're talking about. Even this one, I'm going to remove. We're going to bring it back, but for now, we're going to remove. So if you can check the candlestick, the what passes, and then now it's doing what? It's retesting. Understand? It's retesting. It's obviously when you go to a smaller time frame, you need to readjust this thing to this position here. That's when you're going to see that this point is doing what? It's retesting. The next thing we'll be doing what? We're going to be pushing to the top. There is no a perfect time frame. You need to understand your time frames. Understand? Already here, we see a falling wedge. Understand? We see a falling wedge here. I'm going to take it here. Or maybe I should put it here. Yeah, I think here it's fine. Yeah, so once we break here, that's when we're going to be saying what? Now we push into the top. It's only five minutes. Wait for two candlesticks to break there. You consider yourself selling, selling, I mean, buying opportunities. But if it breaks these zones here, you see these zones, smaller zones here, that's when you're going to consider yourself taking selling opportunities. You don't just enter anywhere. You need to have a plan. You need to plan, okay, it's fine. If you break here, I'm not going to be buying. If you break here, I'm going to be buying. It's on. It's on. Let me refix this, uh, this chart here. I think it's yeah yeah no it's valid once it breaks here you know that you're gonna be executing the buying opportunities that's all guys there's nothing different about that so guys you can type me what i can reanalyze what i can analyze the third one then our session i guess for today it will be that anything guys you can text anything you understand so I'll, i'm gonna go with the ratio of the highest thing that you guys have analyzed so I'm going to leave this thing here. So Ninja. on analysis, I'm going to re-show you guys this thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you can talk. How are you, my bro? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, wait, do you mind if we go to, to, thing, to, to the daily time frame on US 30? Okay, I got no problem doing that. Uh, so on the daily time frame, what is it that I'm going to be doing? Analyzing or... Yeah, analyzing. I want you to start US thirty on the daily time frame. That's cool. It's fine, guys. Oh, let's let's take it from from a daily time frame. I feel like there will be no different, but then nonetheless, I'm gonna be doing it from the higher time frame, daily time frame, like daily. So let me unzoom this chart from the lowest point. So one thing about me, guys, I'm not gonna create uh, a support from this point here. It's crazy because I know that the market won't reach there unless if we have another pandemic, understand? And then the other part is that I'm not going to create a trend from this point here to the top side, understand? The only way I can create this one is when if I'm going to create the higher one. So if I fail to create the, the highest one at the top, then I'm not going to create it. Trust me, I'm not. So it's gonna be like this. So for me, for my trend to be like this, guys, it's already invalid. Understand? So I'm gonna remove it. And then I'm gonna remove this point. It's still, I'm gonna use the same method, guys. Because hence I don't like using a daily time frame is because I know I'm gonna actually cater this position. And as well, I'm gonna cater this position as well. So here it means I'm gonna use this one. Ninja. So I, I use I use I use daily time frame when it's time to use daily time frame when it's not the time I feel like currently it's not the time I feel like at this moment here it's sort of like a correction then we're gonna be having an impulse movement as well. Would you say that we have a double top at the at the top the at the nearest current structure? Uh, the double top where here? No, nah, no, nah, the next higher low, uh, the next lower high. Sorry, can yeah. we go to current structure? Yeah. Yeah, there, there. Would you say that we have a double top there? Uh, 
Uh, let me check. Let me put my zone first and then reset. No, we don't have it. On daily time frame, we don't. I don't know on the smaller time frame. Do you see it? Yeah, 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 yeah. I see it. I see it. Let, let's say on H4, let's see if we do have a double top. Now we don't have it on, 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 on H4 as well. Yeah, we don't have it as well on H4. It's obviously on H1. I know it's there because I can see from those two candlesticks have really touched each other. Uh, yeah, we can say now we have it on on, on, on a daily time frame. On an, uh, what is this? H1 time frame. But let's go back to the daily time frame. So what is it that actually that you, that you wanted to see from the daily time frame? Now I just wanted to see if the structure is also like selling on the daily in the daily time frame. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I can see that like from the higher structure, like the daily would be like you know we have a double uh, top at the top there, and then we might actually have a pullback and then a continuation of the sell. Yeah, yeah. So so the reason I'm gonna be saying that we're still gonna be selling is one thing. So if you can check the previous chart, we did have a major trend that took us to the bottom. We don't have a major trend that is taking us to the top. So hence I say we need to create a major trend in order for us to go to the top. Simple as A, B, C, D. So yeah, you can pick anything guys, anything. Anything that you want. Yeah. Anyone want to analyze the Euro JPY? Euro, Euro JPY. Okay, you at least if anything pairs with JPY, it's going to be simple. Let's go for it. Euro JPY. That's going to be simple. Trust me. Uh, is it Euro JPY? Okay, so because, guys, this one is a currency, I'm not going to start from an H4 time frame. I'm going to actually take it to the weekly time. So I have things that I use on a, on a currencies. I do go for a weekly time frame. Already I see a beautiful correction and an impulse. So that's when I start saying the shape of the market already told me the direction of the market. So let me do this. Already I see a sort of like an impulse correction, correction movement here. So this is the first thing first that I do guys. I check what is it that I'm actually seeing the possibilities. I see that. No, from this position, I might break that top side and move to the top, but that's how I'm actually assuming the chart, but haven't yet analyzed the chart. So what is it that I have to do now? Analyze the chart. So we're gonna assume the chart from the lowest point. Understand, we're gonna assume the chart from the lowest point. Then we're gonna remove everything. So from this point, we're gonna create our highest point and lowest point. Remember, you're not gonna use a weekly time frame to enter entries. Yes, it's possible, but I don't use it. I don't want to blow my account due to the rejection of a weekly time frame because my account will be the smallest ever in the weekly time frame. So you can see now I'm creating my zones. And then I'm going to create another one here. And then I'm going to create another one here. And then another one. I think it's going to be here. Then I'll be done with the zones. So after I'm gonna create my structure. So my structure, it, it will be based on the touches of the trend. So I'll be doing this. So I don't forge anything. I go how the market goes. It's fine, we broke this position. We understand that the power of us pushing to the top is high already. So we're gonna create the lower one, even though for now we're not gonna use it. So let me check it. I don't know where, should I put it here? Yeah, it's fine, I think. Anywhere from here, it's fine. That's cool. So I'm not gonna use the lower one. I'm gonna be using the top side. So I'm gonna reset the chart, the chart now. So after resetting the chart, I need to understand that basically here, it was a sort of like a retest at this position here. This yeah. was my, 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 my retest. This was my retest. So quickly, 
So from this position on the weekly time frame, this is what you see. You understand? There's everything here. You can you can you can name everything that you created and create and, and name them as this is from uh, a weekly time frame. This is what 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 you understand? It's 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 advisable as well. You understand? But at the end of the day, that makes makes you to not forget where did you create certain things. You understand? So from this point, you can see that uh, here here then we broke out here. We we actually having a correction and an impulse. So if you want to invest from currencies here, you can invest once it touches here, then you take a buy. This is a point that I'm believing that we're going there. The end of the day, it's currencies. So now we're going to go to the following one, which is what the daily time frame. Daily time frame. So guys, currencies, you need to hold. If it's currencies, guys, there's not an indices. You hold here. I don't want people who, who trade currencies like indices. Here you hold. Understand? Because it's currencies at the end of the day. You analyze you make sure that you kill. It's a done deal. It's a beautiful thing. As much as you can see here, we had at our bottom on a daily time frame, which got respected, came back, retested on the same zone, then went to the top side. But we're not gonna be using the previous chart. We're using the current one. So the question is, which direction are we gonna be taking? At this certain point here, there's nothing that I believe than creating a trend here. So let me clone this trend to the lower part. That's simple. So at the end of the day, obviously you can't just jump here and then enter buying opportunity, selling opportunity. Last candlestick matters. Then I'm gonna create my simple zone here. Then that's when I'm gonna consider myself going to H for time frame. So already I have my structure, I have everything that I need here. Most of the thing, I have them. So technically, I feel like here we're gonna be taking buying opportunities due to the, the market opening session. I feel like the market will be buying from this position because this position was the only position that I was going to be taking by due to the rejections here, unless if it were to retest here, but we're still going to go further more to the bottom. And then I'm going to create my major key. That's simple. Took it from the major because it's, it's from the daily, the correction is from the daily time frame, So it, it's advisable for me to take the major key, even in the previous chart, it was possible for you to do it to take the major key but check the retest where it retested retested on the trend it was advisable for you to do it do the same thing take the major key as as much as the market was doing one going furthermore to the top like at this certain point so as much as you can see we took our major key here we can see that okay it's fine let's say you were to arrive into the chart you are going to be using a trend breakout retest here and then pushing to the top we're going to 60 minutes time frame. Asking the stick matters. So how are you gonna be entering your buys? If you were to enter buys, the zones, this candlestick one, two, understand? We failed to break the zone, we failed. So as much as we keep on failing, you can't enter your buy. You need to enter your buys once we break. That's when you're gonna be entering your buys when we break the zone. But as much as we fail, you're not gonna be entering your buy. Let's say the candlestick comes out, closes on a bearish. Yes, you're allowed to enter selling opportunities. But if we break the zone, you no longer been become allowed to enter those ones. But don't let the market manipulate you. We're gonna break it. There's a retest comes to the top, break this position, push up, then we'll be moving to the top. So that's my view for, 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 for this one, guys. This is my view, guys. If it was me, I was gonna be taking buying opportunities because of the area that it's inside. For me, it's buying opportunities there. So we can analyze another thing as well. 
we can analyze another thing that you guys think we can analyze. Gementate. Okay, it's fine. Gementate. German 30, guys, it's not a problem because when it comes to indices, it's something that I actually traded. Yes, we're going to reserve this. Is it, is it still recording? Yeah, I think it's still recording. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to actually stop on German 30. Let's go for German 30, guys. Uh, German 30, obviously, it's here. So this, this one, guys, for me, it's indices i'm not gonna be even confusing things i'm gonna start from the creation of it you understand that's sort of like we had an impasse move we're currently having like an ugliest correction ever there's an ugliest correction check the zones that we keep on touching but it's respecting though it's just respecting everything from the previous chart and which is allowed as well it's allowed guys the market can understand that we had a double top yeah we had we had to go to the bottom. I'm going to be using this one. Okay, it's fine. And at the end of the day, I'm going to be creating my zones. Create a zone here. Create a zone here as well. And then you want to create another one here. Even this one, they're going to work when the market passes. You need to understand how you're going to use them. Once we pass here, you apply the other one here. Simple as A, B, C, D. So nonetheless, we're having our zone, but we don't have our trend. Yes, it's possible for us to not have a trend. Don't force it if it's not there. So, but well, let's try to take it from the top to this position. For me, guys, I won't, I won't actually like apply this kind of trend. You know what? The reason I'm calling Kanda is because of one thing. It, it actually gave us a sort of like a proper manipulation at back then. So I don't like analyzing manipulation. So I'm going to do a simple thing. I'm going to take this trend from here and then take it to this point. Yeah, only when I use the rejection. I trust the rejection more than anything. So this one's so sort of like coming back, but the rejection is the best thing ever. So that's when I can consider myself doing what resetting the chart. So from resetting the chart, I'm gonna be taking a trend again from this position here. To this point. So yes, it's, it is advisable for me to take it here. 90% rule. We know we're gonna be buying, you're gonna be having buying opportunities. And the, the, the funny part, guys, is that the more you get uh same direction on Nasdaq and US 30, the more you need to become confident on one of them. So check what is it that I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna take the trend here. The reason I'm taking the trend here, it's one. If I start a trend in the bottom here, I need to start it as well at the top from the same position. And then this is how it is. Yeah, this is, what, this is how now I start seeing my, my chart going the way I want it to go, you understand? So that's when I can go to 60 minutes time frame. Check in what is it that I have. I am having a, a worse rejection ever, understand? But at the end of the day, I don't like not creating points that can disturb me. So I'm gonna create support here. I think it's right here. Yeah, it's here. So this point, it's my support guys. I'm going to wait for the last candlestick to close. If the last candlestick, because I know it can manipulate you. They know that you saw the direction. They can manipulate you. Like, they can manipulate you. Worst manipulation ever to cover this point. But at the end of the day, you wait for it to close at bullish. Then you jump in. Okay. This point once created a big movement. Can as well create a big movement as well. This is not the first time you see a candlestick passing. At the end of the day, it comes back and pushes to the direction that you wanted. It's not for the first time. So yeah, now we can go to 30 minutes time frame. Check the rejection. They, I feel like this was a manipulation because we had a, a proper candlestick here. Obviously, if it was me, I was going to execute buying opportunities. I don't know if I was going to close or hold, but at the end of the day, it hit the stop loss. 
I'm not going to lie to you guys, but in understanding, I know that the market has to hit the third touch in order for it to respect it. If there is a third touch in the bottom and it's closer, but because you already hit it, please take buying opportunities at this position. You're going to thank me later. If you're looking for selling opportunities, this is the position whereby you need to be considering taking them uh, here. That's where you can take your selling opportunities. But at the end of the day, you need to check where is the air, you understand? Where is the market going? If the market is crazily buying, that's when you need to consider yourself not opposing it. Wait for it to close. Last candlestick matters. If you can check here, we had an uh, evening, uh, I think that's an evening bullish candlesticks. The reason it went to the top. So those are kind of things that you need to consider yourself waiting for them. Sometimes when you get a proper candlestick that gives you the right direction, don't jump in. They know that you know the candlestick. So most of cases, if you know something, relax. Analyze the manipulation first. So at the end of the day, guys, uh, here I'm going to give you a direction. It's a buy for me. So guys, I think this is the rest of everything. Wrapped up everything. You can see, took it from the higher time frame. If it was currencies highest, if it was uh, indices, uh, from H4, you can take it from daily time frame. I'm not against it, depending on the analysis. I did take Nasdaq on the daily time frame. Yeah, like you can, if I can go back to, to Nasdaq, you're gonna see that this thing is on a daily time frame, even if I took it from an H4 time frame. Let me reset it and then go to a daily time frame. There's my daily time frame here. You see, this thing I didn't come to daily time frame. I was on an H4 time frame, but at the end of the day, it did reflect on the daily time frame. I'm not against daily time frame. I go by the analysis on H4. When I assume the chart, this is when it will show me if I'm at the wrong position or right position. So at the end of the day, guys, this is the end of our session. If you have questions, guys, uh, I'm gonna open the group. You're gonna ask anything that you wanna ask. Then we're gonna cover that. Remember guys, there are too many, but I'll try to get on every question nonetheless. Thank you guys for joining today's session. Let me save this video so that it shouldn't be long. I should quickly save so that we can be able to send it. Thank you guys. Seems like the class doesn't want to end.